Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Collegiate Call of Duty League. Sorry for the small delay. Just a couple of things to work out on the back end, but we're ready to go with matchup number two. Got Arizona State Sun Devils going up against the University of Texas at Dallas. Should be a good one to go into. Starting things off, I, I, again, proper now joining me in the broadcast here. We're going to be dealing with, a again, two teams out of the Western Division that uh, really have a lot to prove here early season. These are two squads that we anticipate to be somewhere near the top five if not higher than that. So taking a look at this UT Dallas squad first, excited to see what they're going to be able to bring to us as this is their first year participating in the college cot. Yeah, that's right. The uh, West Division, like you already mentioned, is pretty stacked, and Arizona comes to uh, Arizona State University looks to bring just that. Uh, you have Godfather, Fetchstein, Bounty, Cotters, and Sharko. And, well, there was a lot of heat going on in the Twitch chat and uh, across Twitter as well. You know, a lot of these players uh, bring a lot of fire to themselves. Going to be interested to see what they bring along with them. But uh, UT Dallas, however, they have a couple of known players and not afraid to be talking about the confidence. And uh, speaking with one Mr. Jay Pistachio, you see right there in the list, has I uh, feel pretty confident, you would assume, going into this matchup shift. Yeah, I mean, again, Mr. J. Pistachio has been the vocal leader. Fiasco brings a lot of experience, like you mentioned, chemistry. And then we've got the rest of the squad range in Viage. They've been kind of the newer guys that, candidly speaking, Pistachio and Fiasco have kind of said that we need to kind of find a way to come together and treat this like a neutral playing ground because we don't want to make it feel like it's just veterans and rookies. We want to make us feel like a full squad. And they've been putting in a lot of time on the back end to make sure that they're all feeling comfortable going into this pivotal matchup as we'll take a look briefly here at the Arizona State squad and what the Sun Devils are able to bring to the mix. This is a team that I had a chance to watch yesterday for a touch. And uh, my goodness, proper, they absolutely tore the lights out of UCAL Berkeley. Uh, <laughs> I think they combined out of four maps. U UC Berkeley maybe only combined 50 total points on hardpoint throughout the entire rotation. There was a 250 to 15, a 250 to 13. It was bad. So for coders, Effectini, Bounty, Godfather, and Sharko, I think the general sentiment is that this should probably be the favorite squad going into this matchup. But again, anything can happen. You know, I had a chance to watch these two guys scrim up against each other back and forth a couple of days previously. And this UT Dallas squad was putting up a heck of a fight. So as we get into an actual scenario where it is not just scrims and we're getting into a match day where you're able to go through and ban Vito and find a way to kind of pick and choose your map scenario that you want, this UT Dallas squad absolutely could be on the same playing field as this Arizona State team. You're not wrong. Uh, if you were lucky enough to uh, catch the match, uh, the Modern Warfare launch tournament, ladies and gentlemen, well, you would have seen that this roster in particular were able to win 3-0 versus ENMU, but lost 3-0 against the very uh, strong team in Concord Maroon. So probably looking for a good start here in the CCL season, looking to carry onward with uh, how strong these players uh, showcase themselves in the scrims like Shift was talking about. But uh, starting off here within the map set, we are going to Hackney Yard for Hardpoint. And all players loaded in, and we are ready to get underway. And again, it will be this first opening hard point. It could be so crucial because not only does UT Dallas want to find a way to get some time here, but they want to set the tone and also maybe try to influence the spawns for the second hard point on the right side of your mini map, where it's just where things will really start to generate a lot of the points. The Arizona State. It'll be just down to Godfather. Last player left alive in this warehouse will be taken down. A nice little spree of. Kills coming for UT Dallas as they will clean up the hill, start to generate some points, and now look to move across the map. Yeah, that's right. Well, UTD able to get control of that window, high ground control, and get in a lot of good shots and garner them a really good control on top of this hard point. And getting this one and not allowing a full on 50 50 split would be ideal, but coming on in with the MP5 rush will be Arizona State. Gonna be able to break up time here momentarily. It's just scrap time. It's going to be coming over here for P1. We will be moving over here momentarily to the second hard point. You can already see there's a player for Arizona State setting themselves up for that. And this is great for Arizona State. Godfather has kept his life for so long that UT Dallas was not actually able to push across the map together. So even though they were able to put one person into the P2 spawns, it's not enough to influence it because we have to deal with the player sitting warehouse. Envy will be taken down. Pistachio with the M4 trying to watch over the middle. Fiasco with another. So now all of a sudden, UT Dallas squad, if they hit this parking lot together, they could potentially influence spawns. Able to find a couple of kills across the map towards the fire car will do nicely for UT Dallas. And now all of a sudden, it's going to be a full flood up the top. Sharko for one. He's got some assistance here with one more teammate. And he'll find himself a second. And just like that, the Sun Devils will hold at least initially here with 30 seconds remaining. 
<laughs> Minor explosion going off. On the top side of that hard point could be the opportunity that Texas Dallas might need to get inside there. They do have the kills. It's just more scrap time coming through there. And well, previously on P1, they were dedicating themselves to a very long fight for scrap time as the setup was coming through for Arizona State. Uh, Texas Dallas did dedicate a player towards getting that scrap time off. And it wasn't really the wisest choice as they gave up the setup for P2. You can see P3 going towards the phone booth side this time around. Yeah. Texas Dallas are going to go ahead and change up their plan of attack and going to go ahead and dedicate three players. One already down. Going inside the office here is chemistry or inside their player name will be cocaine. And is able to get up two with their MP5. That SMG rush and control of this lower part in this mid scoop shift can really help out control over this hard point. Oh, this is a big moment here for Cocaine. He finds two. Not only does he find two kills, though, he's able to clear out some of that spade. It's in that office looking for one more. FFTD will stay alive only for a small time, though. This fiasco will be able to come over and help out with Putrid Orange. And that's a nice little clear of at least around the middle of the map. But you can see Arizona State have now gotten themselves in favorable position for what will eventually be the P5 spawns. But it comes at a cost. They've got 20 seconds remaining still. Pistachio and Cocaine doing what they can to hold the scrap time of the last 15 on this neutral third hill. It looks like most of that time will go to Arizona State, but it doesn't come without UT Dallas getting themselves right back in the game as they look to rotate out of their warehouse spawns over towards the office where P4 will spawn up here in the next three. They really needed this hard point here, Shift. It's going to be able to set up a uh, decent amount of momentum, and they're learning from their mistakes going into P2, and they're committing to the setup on the rotations for what is going to be oh, P P4 here, and it's a... Uh, Going to be a little bit of a scrap going back and forth. Trades going in the favor, however, as Arizona State will control this new hard point on the inside on the, of the office. Trophy system is down, but the kill's still flooding in here for Texas Dallas, and to be able to march in here, contest it here for a moment's time. Fiasco has a better <laughs> choice of words there, both for his teammate and the enemy. He's going to be able to keep control of this hard point. Just to challenge this with an optic-based M4 is already bold enough. Effectini and Arizona State will push back across, but they've lost the favorable spawns going into what will be our fifth hill of that back warehouse. Coder's doing what he can from the top of the mid jump heady. We'll be able to find one that was Cocaine trying to rotate in before he gets traded back. And even still, Putrid Orange is going to hit this for scrap time. That's going to go well for UT Dallas. They're not only able to take away about 10 seconds, but they actually generate some in their favor while not even influencing the spawns against them. So Arizona State and the Sun Devils, they do hold on to a small lead for now. But as we go to the back docks, it's all UT Dallas in control of this hill. Smoke will be used initially for Bounty to try to push through. Finding one by the caravan will be taken down by Puchin from behind. And UT Dallas will find a handful of trades technically going in their favor as they not only hold on to the hill, but they're still in the position to contest these back spawns. And it's going to be so hard to get a player off from the top side of this hard point. But there are no players remaining for UT Dallas in here besides Cocaine. Marches their way in, is able to clear it up and gain control of this hard point. Immediately snapping onto the player coming in the backside of that hard point as well and well now this is going to be ut dallas going to be able to take the lead back for the first time since p1 they're looking to control this entire map including the mid there are players from arizona state chasing in the backside, but envy just going to go ahead and just snap immediately and take down multiple members and i'm going to go ahead and set themselves up for p1 as well 16 and 16, 15 and 9, 13 and 11, 16 and 11, 15 and 13. Everyone positive in the KD department for UT Dallas is not only do they get a pretty quick rotation to the warehouse, but they're actually in a position to maybe influx the spawns for P2, which again would give them an opportunity to really kind of take over this game, depending on how these next 40 seconds go. And UT Dallas breaking on in. Fiasco will find two in the mid warehouse. And again, this entry more status that he's been able to rock with the M4 is giving so much versatility to his team. And flat out, Arizona State is just getting absolutely outgunned. An early break here for UT Dallas into the warehouse. They've got three members here to deal with Jarko, who eventually falls. And more importantly, they're still holding on to those right side spawns for the tire shop coming up in the next 15 seconds. They're committing to all these rotations and sticking along with it. Arizona State are seemingly getting caught off guard. I'm just throwing themselves at the point. It's a nice little two kills coming in the kill feed thus far, but immediately cut back down. Every single time Arizona State starts finding these entry frag shift, they all seem to just get swarmed upon the remaining members of UTD. Envy will go down, peeking over the window towards the jump spot, but Cocaine's right there for another two-piece. McCocaine up at 16 and 14, finding these entry frags is continuously the reason why you see UTD able to flood themselves into each hard point every single time. 
And this is a dangerous setup for Arizona State. Not only do they try to break from the top side of the tire shot, but they send a couple players bottom. And when you split the hit like that on the second point tire shot, it's very difficult to fully win spawns because the game still feels like UT Dallas should be spawning in. So they don't spawn to the north or the south. They spawn actually in the hard point. So it makes life extremely difficult for Arizona State when you split hit the spawns like that. And they do essentially find that going against their favor. UT Dallas with the last 10 seconds of scrap time will get to the, about the 164 mark to 148. Arizona State, though, controlling mid-map, will be able to get the initial time of this smokestack, phone booth, whatever you want to call it, underneath the canopy in this third hard point, <laughs> which will do well for them to start taking away the differential, but that's until the M4 presence of UT Dallas are able to absolutely surround Fiasco and Pistachio, combine for four kills, make it five, as Pistachio will find himself another. Now he will eventually be taken down, but with that M4 pressure, oh. now it's up to Cole. Oh, oh, oh. Four straight, looking for a fifth. It'll eventually be Bounty who takes him down, but already a lot of good contest time for the side of UT Dallas. It's just the patience when they had all the members, even waiting for the one remaining member who got the scrap time on P2 before they fully committed to attacking P3, catching multiple members rotating into the hill. It's just so wise. UTD playing with the right amount of discretion before playing with all the aggression and you can see in the kill fee not only leading in kills going back and forth arizona state will be taking the lead here momentarily as they start to come back to life and be with a good nade kill there you see starting to answer back but arizona state going to be able to get this remaining hard point control we are moving our way into the bottom office again bounty started getting the first shots off but immediately put down putrid orange for two and be able to set themselves up in here wonderfully this Texas Dallas team looks like a whole new squad since I last watched them play. <laughs> they flipped the spawns for P5 off of that late hit for the third hard point. So now that Putrid Orange is popping off on four straight, holding this SMG down inside the hill specifically, UT Dallas is growing their lead to 20. There's still 30 seconds left. They will lose the spawns here, though. Again, Arizona State opting for the rotation through the mid map, but they're giving up so much hard point time to the point where UT Dallas, they're going to so up these last 18 seconds and all they really need to do in the next two hills is make sure they find a way to somehow contest the fifth hill and even if they lose a full 60 they can win off the third rotation on the first hard point in the warehouse you have every single member of texas dallas well above 20 kills they are all remaining as positive as can be besides mr j pistachio with their ar is at 25 and 27 is still impressive as all get out fiasco up top near the smokestack entering themselves Upstairs, you gotta turn around. You gotta be careful oh of that jump kick fiasco coming in. Wiping house. Gonna be able to clean up and take control of this hard point. Five straight for fiasco and he breaks the hill with an M4. It's an incredulous statement because it's an incredible feat. And now as it's 182 to 229, Fiasco still <laughs> playing his life. He'll find himself a six kill. Here come the rest of the SMGs and the comments from the University of Texas Dallas could technically win on this hill. Arizona State looking to flood through the back. The first player gets shut down. Coders will find two. Fiasco finding his teammates. MP5, he finds another double kill. In seven more seconds, we'll see a victory for UT Dallas. Dallas, and they're going to do it here on P5 with the flawless break from Nate Fiasco. The Comets from Dallas win the first map 250-182. Unbelievable turn of events, especially going into P2. You would almost think that because they were trying to chase off all the kills that UTD were playing from so far behind, but taking all those kills and turning it into map control shift, it just seems so dominant on the latter half of this hard point. And very impressive, nevertheless, to be Fiasco with a six straight. You had multiple angles being held, whether it was by Mr. J Pistachio, the entry frags coming through from Cocaine and their MP5, as well as Envy. You could talk about every single one of these players on Hardpoint, and it could be a long story to tell. 33 and 23 for Nate Fiasco. Pistachio with the other AR, 25 and 30. Putrid Orange having a great game at 28 and 20, and his counterpart in Envy goes 28 and 21. Cocaine drops nearly 30, and this UT Dallas squad has got to be feeling the energy here simply due to the fact that, again, I'm not going to lie to you here, uh, proper. The simple fact of the matter is 
when I was watching these two teams scrim, Arizona State had a definitive leg up on this UT Dallas squad, but that was nothing more than opposite the case in our first iteration of Hack the Yard. Brilliant takes from UT Dallas to get the second spawns, doing well to find good generation of score on the third and fourth. And then again, that flawless break early on P5 in our second rotation to secure them the win. That's just absolutely brilliant play from the comments of UT Dallas. And whether it's uh, the pressure of the first match of the season, or it could just be the confidence plus the well-versed practice that we have been seeing out from uh, Texas Dallas, uh, both could be true. You never really know because, they, like you said, the scrim results are not coming into light. And it will, right. if you've ever been in any sort of professional esport at all, scrim time, scrim bucks, throw them out the window because coming into a tournament game, all of that, you could have a plan at the end of the day, but once you get punched in the face by how strong UT Dallas have been playing, this is uh, quite the quite the turn of events indeed. Absolutely the case. Let's take a look back at our scoreboard, though, to see exactly how things folded here and Hack the Yard and where we'll be heading to next. It'll be the Gunrunner for Search and Destroy after the 250-182 win on the Hack the Yard hard point. And this Arizona State team left a little bit reeling, you kind of feel... Again, a lot of people in the Western Division are feeling like Arizona State may have been maybe the top two teams out there with Texas A&M Maroon. And, uh, well, UT Dallas throwing their weight around the ring. You know, candidly speaking to Justin Pistachio, uh, he was talking about how he didn't really feel good about the team's chances. And then I kind of said, bud, the West Division is not exactly the Northeast or Southeast Division. There is the <laughs> opportunity if you guys put in some good practice to possibly be near the top. And now all of a sudden, they find themselves up again. It is just one map, but still the performance that UT Dallas was able to put through as a full five man squad was nothing short of impressive. Here's the thing about uh, what you can take away from the hard point of Hackney Yard. You can end up learning from these mistakes. If you are Arizona State, maybe not try to commit, whether it was isolated 1v1s or just trying to clear out multiple, always expecting that UT Dallas have been traveling in packs like they were in Hackney Yard Hardpoint. The same could be said here for Search and Destroy Gunrunner, as we know a lot of teams would rather favor just to flood into an entire point. Just get the focus fire together, lay down your positions, and more importantly, just land those shots, shake off that first map, and just go into this one with a clean slate. Yeah, and that's the big thing, is you have to shake that one off if you're the Sun Devils Absolutely. of Arizona State. You need to come back with this one with a cool, calm, collected head. And we've seen that this UT Dallas squad is finding a lot of favor. Their M4s are absolutely gunning right now. And this is a map where, again, long lines of sight are definitely available to you going into the Gunrunner search and destroy. But I think the scarier thing is the simple fact that UT Dallas just had Cocaine, Envy, and Putrid Orange absolutely shredding the MP5 entry game. And you kind of wonder about what that's going to look like as we move over to their potential offenses. Will we see some dead silence hits coming through? Again, if you're a little unfamiliar with what Call of Duty looks like in Modern Warfare competitively. And of course, not having dead sounds as a constant perk, but an ability that has to be charged up. It kind of leaves you with these certain rounds where sometimes you have to wait 30, 45 seconds in a round just so your teammates can get dead sounds to make aggressive hits across the map. Otherwise, it's a lot of just us versus you, almost like old time Civil War battles where we'll just line up, you just line up. <laughs> we'll trade some grenades, we'll trade some AR fire, and we'll see who comes out on top. Although Gunrunner is not one of the maps that really feels like that because of how the map is sectioned off. You know, the B-bomb site is the one where we're going to be seeing a lot of the action take place in yep. front of those crates. The bomb site is actually super favorable to the offense simply due to the cover that it provides. It's going to be University of Texas at Dallas and the Comets starting things off with their offense. Mr. J. Pistachio will be the one rotating long towards the wood side, I imagine, with this M4 to watch over his teammates pushing forward. Cocaine already up into the bathrooms. You look for him to maybe make a first blood happen. He sure will. It's right on the outside of this beat crates. Now the smoke will blow us through, and you're going to get future drones dropping this bomb immediately. Pistachio with the set nade is able to find Sharko on the other side of the crates, too. So... Little numbers advantage here for Texas Dallas. They're going to take that and start pushing forward. Trades yet again as Cocaine goes down to join Fiasco. But losing Godfather could be another opening for this offense. They still have 30 seconds to be playing around with. The only problem is that Bomb is down. And Bounty does see this. So it's going to come down to a good mid-breakthrough. And marching on forward right into Cotter's sightline. It's going to be two headshots for them. But Mr. Jay Pistachio... The lone survivor here for Texas Dallas makes us a 1v1 versus Cotters. Is already on two straight with their M4, just holding this position alone. So we do have the defuse coming through. Not really much you could be doing about this. The shots do come through. However, Texas Dallas 
Mr. Jay Pistachio putting on a show, what getting three in round number one. And that's the danger, flat out, of having a player who is free to be back on this back balcony, or this awning, rather, not really a balcony, not meant to be stood on, but he finds a way to get up to that piping. And if you don't deal with an M4 player way into the back, he can just sit there and watch over the bomb plant spot. So Mr. Jay Pistachio was able to find a set date early, plus the last two to clutch things up in the 1v2. UT Dallas find a first successful offense, and now will be looking to set themselves up defensively where Arizona State will be coming through. And again, Bob will be heading through the middle of the map. How about this? Three members of UT Dallas actually hitting from water. Sharko not quite ready for it. Effectini will be able to find one, but there's still a lot of pressure here as Putrid Orange has worked his way into Boiler. And if Arizona State doesn't realize this, they might just lose their bomb carrier, which they do. So now all of a sudden, UT Dallas has a little bit of a favor over the mid map, and Arizona State has to find a way to recollect this bomb. All about finding that first entry frag, which unfortunately Cocaine doesn't. But like you said, finding the bomb carrier, making this an even 4v4, came down to the disengage. And then the follow-up for a setup. So you got two players for Texas Dallas setting up, looking at B just in case the rotation comes through. Mr. J Pistachio again with the angle, able to turn things up. And Putrid Orange able to join them as well. Three down for Arizona State. It comes down to Cotters and Sharko. And with their M4 intact, Mr. J Pistachio is just putting on a showcase, ladies and gentlemen, is on five straight in between rounds one and two, has yet to die, and he's yet to be fully dealt with. Recognize that's the last player running towards <laughs> past coal mines. Going to be getting this little bit of a jump peek, and they spot out the player who just fully is disengaging around the train cars. Going to have to make a miracle happen here for Cotters, as they still have 40 seconds to play with. Yeah, and Coder's in the backside here. He's actually slipped behind the defensive lines, but like you mentioned, the time is ticking away, and he's got to find the bomb plus four kills. It seems like a daunting task for anybody. Coders will make his way through the shower side, now up through water. He's got dead silence, and you feel like if you're going to make this play happen, you're going to need to use it, but will it even be worth the investment in a 1v4 with only 15 seconds left? And at this point, now that he's got no time to even get the bomb and get to a bomb site won't even get through the vent as again putrid orange just digging his way in initially from water to vent he gets into the boiler room and this becomes king of the castle here he found i think two or three kills this round with this play it's just so impactful as far as the rim is concerned right in the center of the map regardless of the map variant hard point domination s and d getting control of boiler seems to do so much regardless of the game variant you can get that mid control players coming through the bathroom and inside this warehouse where you see fiasco running through as well and it's just the power of just that one room in that mid control and fiasco on board here with their m4 marches forward is just going to be holding this angle looking at that turnaround of a boiler room just in case a player pushes through there is one cocaine finds their entry frag fiasco actually goes down from bounty who is the player that was pushing through boiler room and this is all of a sudden not two bears on a state if they can find the kill. Ooh. Big 1v1 win there for Sharko. It was going to be a close one versus Cocaine, who came across plus a second. Oh, what a response that is from Sharko and the rest of the Arizona State team. They will retake the B-bomb site. And again, you're going to be seeing some of this. If you're familiar to the Black Ops four days early on, there was a lot of teams who would just wait to defuse the bomb because they wanted to charge up specialists. Not the case here, but you wait so that way you can get a little bit extra charge towards your dead silence. So you're going to be seeing a lot of that in the near future. But what a retake of the bomb site there for Arizona State. Mostly Sharko able to hold on the two players pushing right into him. And Arizona State able to take their first round defensively. Uh, even Bounty pushing through and getting that isolated 1v1 versus Fiasco was a uh, massive. Fiasco was the player holding the doors at the beginning of that round. Made a decent amount of players of Texas Dallas turn around. One of which was Mr. J Pistachio and taking out that longer lines of sight with a player like Mr. J Pistachio and that M4 can really help things out in Arizona State. But the round on the board, look to take this offense and being able to win it out. Just playing rather patiently, waiting to see if there's any information that they can gain from the defense. Texas Dallas go for an even 2-3 split. Players are getting rather close to one another towards the center around the water side. They'll be running into each other momentarily, but Putrid Orange getting the first kill in this round traded back onto Envy. There's just so much trust from this UT Dallas squad. Mr. J Pistachio was the only player at B right now. I believe they've got Fiasco watching from the train cars. He's just going back and forth between middle and B in case he needs to help. But the SMG play for UT Dallas, 
has been buzzing around the mid map. The boiler room, again, not an option for Arizona State, at least not safely, as Putrid Orange was able to find a kill near the outside. And how about this? This is a bold rotation for Sharko by himself, taking the bomb over to A. He's going to meet up against one player who's over here if we can get his perspective really quickly, as he's got dead silence coming through. Sharko looking to make the play, and he will find a kill. So Putrid Orange falls. And now all of a sudden, the rest of the Arizona State squad will be moving over to the A bomb site, hoping to get this down. But how about this? A little bait and switch. So let's <laughs> back on up. Big 1v1 here between Bounty and Cocaine. Ooh. Bounty able to take it. And now all of a sudden, the AR players for UT Dallas are wondering which bomb site we have to defend. That 1v1 was very pivotal. And you see this, like you said, this bait and switch coming through. Arizona State giving up the time just to commit to rotations. Being able to set up bomb here. On to B. Just comes down to Fiasco and Mr. J. Pistachio to try to take this on as well as possible. But Godfather holding here. Going to be peeking out here momentarily from the showers. Gets behind the containers. Gets a little stuck. This timing is about to be wonderful. It pays off. Arizona State putting two back to back. Yeah, I mean, that was, even if he loses that gunfight, he's got the trade right behind him. Again, you see Pouncy on this X-ray of ours that we've got. He'd be right there, and you could see him actually starting to run forward. The trade would have been there regardless, but a big play there from Godfather, just knowing the timing. And what a little bait and switch from Arizona State, honestly. I mean, Sharko initially had the brass stones to just push solo through Cole, not having any possession of the boiler room in his team's favor. He finds a big 1v1. If he dies there on the A bomb site, that's bombed down. And Arizona State is all of a sudden backed up into a corner. But he gets the pick. And now all of a sudden, Cocaine, a little 1v1 versus Effectini, who will find the first blood for Arizona State. And the Sun Devils now off to a nice third round in a row here as they've got a five on four situation. It's the, the second time in a row there on offense, you see Cocaine pushing through towards the water side. At what point do you just try to allow the player to come through and catch them off guard by guessing the corners or taking the vent yourself? May not matter because the trades came through from Pistachio. As well as more players can be traded back. Mr. J. Pistachio goes down, but you see the immediate oh, advantage as far as lives comes huh. through. Well, nowhere to run outside that warehouse. Well scouted out, like you would mention, Shift and UTD. They're able to answer back. University of Texas Dallas are now in the lead. Three to two. Still not out of the woods yet, pun intended. No. I mean, again, Effectini, if he's able to get that flung just a touch sooner... Maybe him and Sharko can make something happen, just essentially trapping UT Dallas on the B side of the map. But just, again, good follow-up kills from UT Dallas. The Comet's able to battle back against the 4v5 very nicely. Again, you look at Mr. J. Pistachio, 6-3. and three. Putrid Orange is 5-3. and three. Not to be outdone by too much because Sharko, 5-3. And, and Effectini with first blood now 7-4. and four. As, again, UT Dallas battling back against the numbers game. And Arizona State, on their next offensive hit, are spreading the map, and they've got good mid-map control here. They've got the option of going A this time around if they so want to. Might be wise to. I mean, this patient play is what ended up starting their back-to-back -back round victory. You see the bomb carrier starting to work oh. their way around towards the A side, and Efectini with their MP5. I'm going to find the player in Cocaine towards the drop in the river. Marches on forward, slides in, be able to kill Fiasco on the top of the cars. And that's an immediate life advantage here for Arizona State, although only by one, immediately dropped down. Effect Heaney with three in this round alone. Then gets cut down by Envy. Yeah, then but has the to win a 1v2. Yeah, the information as far as where Envy got the kill from, so Sharka will push right on forward. I think Bounty may have heard a little bit of information because the bomb did not immediately get planted. Envy giving himself a chance here. 1v1 versus Sharko. Bomb will be planted. But Indy might have the element of surprise here. As he's got dead silence, he will hit the triggers and start to move very rapidly across the back side of the map. Wants to make sure nobody's over by the woods, which is a very dangerous area to be dealing with. But Sharko has opted to go topside container. He's going to have to peek at some point. And I don't think he saw Indy over to the side. Based on what Envy's looking at, it looks like he had some kind of information, but he's going to have to challenge him. We'll go up the rock for the mantle. It's going to be down to timing. Envy able to find the 1v1, shaking it off, saying not today. And UT Dallas able to come back with Envy's 1v2. And now it's going to be a 4-2 scoreline as we head to round number seven. Silence really turning things around. Definitely didn't see him. Couldn't even hear him right around that tree side. And well, Envy making a little bit of magic happen. Now with a two-point lead. Can Texas Dallas be able to win the next two, if not win out this map and continue on? Shocking a lot of people, maybe even themselves, as to how well they're playing versus Arizona State University.
Sun Devils absolutely reeling, though not without a few bright spots themselves. We already talked about it last round. We saw Efectini able to pop off, finding three within that previous round. Going to need a little bit more backup coming through if you want to stop you. Uh, Texas Dallas in their tracks. Uh, man, and Effectini, who just had so much success by the A cars last round, gets absolutely destroyed by four UT Dallas players pushing through Cole. I don't think it was ever properly scouted. No AR players for the Arizona State were watching the mid cross. So now they have to find a retake this from what is essentially the second hard point in this back munitions depot. Bomb already planted 30 seconds. Cocaine working the flank with that silence has found one challenge in the oh. second. Able to take down Godfather. Goodness gracious, how does he ever win that one? B1. And now Sharko left against three. No chance. UT Dallas up 5 2 has an opportunity to surprisingly potentially go up two maps to nothing with one more round win. Just could be the boost coming through with the dead silence, unable to track down Cocaine. But regardless, you got to win those, especially when you see it coming your way. Cocaine flexing a little bit there. It was a really well-resourced round from Texas Dallas, putting themselves up on map point shift. And you take a look at them and their KD ratios. Mr. J. Pistachio had a fantastic start with five straight out of round one and two. Is now up at eight and five with their AR. Getting a lot of good kills as the rotations start to come through. And that's by way of holding on the top of that tin. Seem to be setting up shop up there. Could be even looking for a lease setting up here I mean, Arizona State starting to push through unfortunately the SMG players are winning gunfights but the bomb is nowhere to be found so again future oh, orange future coming it. back forward able to find two kills and more importantly for the comments of UT Dallas the bomb hasn't been planted so they've got extra time to play with future orange gets maybe a little bit too aggressive with that peak and it will just be down to NV and it's not a 1v2 this time it's a 1v3 the bomb will eventually be planted and now Envy has to consider how he wants to deal with this. He's going to try to hold close to see if he can get a free kill somewhere by the bathrooms or in the crates area. Coders over to his left. He won't check this. Not in time. Neither player actually will see one another. So now maybe an opportunity for Envy from a distance, but eventually does get team shot down. But goodness gracious, Arizona State, if you're going to double hit SMGs up the middle there, you've got to get your bomb planner right behind that because if that's successful, that bomb needs to go down quicker and Putrid Orange almost makes it another interesting round. Yeah, I mean, Sharko was the bomb carrier that round for Arizona State University. Just kind of held off inside the warehouse, never really uh, committed with the aggression of their SMGs. Like you said, Shift, you got to be able to push on through, get those frags, get the immediate advantage, but you have to plant the bomb and start that rather early. Texas Dallas might be able to turn that around. Had Envy waited a, just a little longer for their dead silence to be online. They were feeling themselves about it, but saving it for this round might be the better cause. You see the set nates coming in already from Texas Dallas trying to clean up this point. It's going to be met, though. Efectini finding first blood in this lobby. That's a good entry fragger out of the way. Cocaine has been dealt with quite often here on our second map of Gunrunner. The trades are still coming through with Envy and Mr. J. Pistachio. Arizona State now. They're only up by one. And now answer. Yeah, Godfather is in a really tough spot. You can see he's just feeling a little unsure. Doesn't double peek with his teammate on the player sitting on the outside of the oil dump, which is Mr. J. Pistachio. Coders from behind now needs to make a play. Godfather finds Fiasco up front. Pistachio caught between a rock and a hard place, quite literally the rock to his left and the oil dump to his left. Oh boy, Mr. J. Pistachio finds one up close. Godfather is not going to have time to defuse this bot. Ooh. Justin Pistachio will actually take the kill as well. UT Dallas in the Comets <laughs> win the search and destroy 6-3, and now all of a sudden they're up two maps to nil. Mr. J. Pistachio going over 50%. 12-6, I believe, was their final KD ratio. Never giving up that wood side towards the tins over the bomb site with their AR ringing in true. Mr. J. Pistachio, quite the show. However, you see Efactini at 13-8 and on the other side. You almost have to wonder that if those uh, if those entry frags were met by either well-timed aggression or proper angles being held, we could have been looking at a different game, but all of that and a bag of chips being shown by University of Texas Dallas, and that's going to garner them a 2-0 series lead thus far. I mean, color me surprised that you could pick which shade of color that is because, goodness gracious, this UT Dallas squad is looking impressive. Maybe it needs to be some shade of orange or green because... <laughs> the comments out of Texas Dallas are looking absolutely impressive so far against this Arizona State squad. Uh, taking a look as far as where we've been and where we'll be going here at the map scores. 
map number one, the Hackney Yard. 250 to 182 is Arizona State just flat out got out rotated. And then Gunrunner Surge and Destroy going down a hefty deficit. It will turn up 6-3 for the University of Texas out of Dallas. Coming up next, though, here, anything can change. It's St. Petro domination. And candidly speaking, this Arizona State team really seems to have a handle on this map, if I remember back correctly from the last time I saw them play. And this is where momentum can absolutely swing around if you're a Sun Devil fan. Absolutely. Uh, Arizona State University, they've already made the swap in Hardpoint uh, into, into Search and Destroy, where they had Sharko beginning on the MP5 for Hardpoint. Swapped over the M4, and will St. Petro being a little bit longer sightline of a map, uh, whether you're inside the hazmat or the cafe side, all the way on the coast side, plus billiards, you can be finding a lot of good angles with a multitude of ARs. However, there is still that peak on the outside uh, from the tram station all the way towards the back. Uh, it, with, with an AX-50, we've seen shifts uh, with a well-timed smoke, and if you can count to a certain series of numbers, you can probably land a good couple of frags. I mean, I can't imagine we're going to see a sniper rifle on domination, but the rest of the points, I think, absolutely. I can be hopeful. Validity. You could. I know how much you love your sniper gameplay. I know how much you love it. That's right. But that's flat right. out, I mean, this is literally, if I were to just put a picture on what St. Petro Dom is, it's like World War One. It's all about getting from one <laughs> trench to the another, getting to another. It's all about if you can get into your opponent's building and set up a good line of defense there. Uh, flat out the C side of the map is the more favored side because you can get to be quicker and you just have more availability to play from the top of hazmat to rotate around the mid side of the map and watch your flag from your building which is the most important I think key when it comes to the C Dom you know me personally speaking I really want to see the B flag move from where it currently is over to the apartment complex so there's a reason that you go to the apartment complex at all but regardless of that matter it's going to come down to who can use that side of the map, the mid tracks, the apartment side to try to flip spawns around from the A flag sides, especially because the moment that you start to get bottled up and your opponent takes control of your building is the moment that you're kind of reeling and having to fight back. We've seen blowouts mostly on this map when it comes to pro scrims, path to pro matches doesn't seem to make a difference. The simple fact of the matter is, this is not a map that typically ends up very close because usually one team understands the win conditions when it comes to where you stage your squad and the other typically struggles to re-break through. So will that be the case or will we still see maybe some more surprising things to come through? Only time will tell here. We're about ready to go for map number three against St. Petrograd for the domination. We're just waiting on one more player to join us. And, you know, again, I don't mean to sit here and say that this UT Dallas squad is at all bad it's just the simple fact the matter if you know me and you we talked to justin a lot about this squad and he's <laughs> not shy about the fact that he's a little bit unconfident about what this team was able to bring together when he initially was doing tryouts he wasn't even sure if there were going to be five good players to pick from but they've been scrimming they've been putting in the work and that's the biggest thing if you've been watching any of this ut dallas squad in the past this dallas team tonight is the best iteration that we have ever seen of this Comet squad, and they're going up against a very strong opponent in Arizona State. Yeah, Mr. J. Pistachio has got to have a pep in their step, especially coming off of uh, S&D again. 12-6 and six with those longer sidelines being held by their AR can end up hopefully turning some of that into some more magic coming into, uh, into our next map on St. Petro. But like you said, Arizona State feel very well versed on this map specifically. Uh, Call of Duty itself is a very momentous game as it may be through as the series progresses. And into the domination, like you said, specifically on St. Petro, it, it's never really close. It's uh, it's not really one of those maps to take a uh, yeah, hackney yard or gun rudder domination, for example, where you can typically get one of those AZ, AC holds. It's right, just yeah. such a long rotation that you have to be working your way through, whether that's uh, all the way through the outscoops of the map, uh, looking on your side of the coast side. And that's where you're going to be running into Mr. J. Pistachio with that AR more than likely. And they are more than happy to take that one or two piece as uh, the Arizona State could be committing towards that AC hold. Now, that's just all just uh, completely spectacle. Of course, Arizona State could be the ones in control of uh, whether it's CB, depending on which spawns they like to hold. But controlling said spawns is rather easy on these on this map just for the amount of chokes that you have to be working your way out of. Oh, absolutely. And that's the big thing is when you do start to see that we are split spotting. You know, we're getting some spawns by C, yeah. we're getting some spawns by A. 
are you able to kind of rally the troops and decide how we're going to play this? What are we going to focus? Because a lot of teams do get kind of trapped by the fact that, hey, we spawned all the way by A. We have to go to the A flag, but that sometimes isn't the best play. Looks like we are having a little bit of trouble getting all of our players in the lobby, so we'll send things to a small break. Don't go too far, though. When we come back, UT Dallas looking to 3-0 Arizona State. Will that be the case, or can the Sun Devils start to piece together a potential reverse sweep? We'll find out on St. Petrodom right when we come back. Right, welcome back to the Collegiate Call of Duty League. We're here in match number two of the evening with Arizona State currently down. The callers are correct. Our team logos at the top are a little bit stopped, though. There we go. Perfectly timed out as Arizona State will be spawning again from that favorite side. Looking to make a comeback. Future George will find one. The second player is Sharko. And that's actually not bad for Arizona State. Yes, they get wiped off the beat flag, but they get the capture. And can they find a way to come back and hold it? It looks like the answer will be no, as Indy will be the player to come through and lock up the beat point. And just like that, UT Dallas with kills mid-map are able to push through the lion statue and set themselves up with two flight control early. Yeah, coming through that statue side, but most importantly, like that coast, it's coming through. You had two players flood in and spawn soon to follow. Reinforcements coming in cleanly. Mr. J. Pistachio, control of that hazmat car, that little a amber lance. Gonna go ahead and just get cut down ever so slightly. But again, the backup is still there. Multiple members trying to hit the beat on flag site. Immediately cleaned up. You see Fiasco sliding in. Joined by Envy in the kill feed with another two-piece. Their MP5 has been ringing true all series long. And again, with this early lead, and look at the pressure. Again, just a couple of individuals moving across mid-map just to keep this Arizona State from getting too comfortable in their building. Although I say that, and they play a little bit more passively, letting Mr. J. Pistachio set himself up with an M4. Fiasco able to find two more. That was all by the river. Fiasco eventually goes down. But you still have a player mid-map for UT Dallas that can likely hold on to this B flag. As long as the timing is good, he's going to hit from behind. There's one, there's oh, two. Pistachio. Mr. Pistachio will clean things up, but not in time, as Arizona State will flip the B flag. And now with a couple more lingering Sun Devils around, it looks like Arizona State should be able to hold this for a small time. Got to be able to take care of Envy. There they go, finally going down, however. But the damage might already be done, as you see multiple members flooding into the site. A team kill comes through with the nade, but able to answer back onto Cocaine, who was starting off to clear the beat on flag site. And Fiasco controlling this ambulance. And this could, could be quite big if they are, um, the, end up turning this into a couple kills here, Shift. They are giving off some shots, exposing the sight lines that they are currently holding with their M4. Got to get those shots out, however. Fiasco able to get the kill in a second. Finally going down, but how about Sharko? Able to take down Fiasco and Envy. Remains in firm control with them and Arizona State on the BDOM site. And more importantly here for the Sun Devils, they're getting some good mid-map pressure here, throwing up an SMG over towards the mid-train tracks. And the more that he can kind of flow around, maybe find a little bit of a mini pinch, the better it'll be for the Sun Devils. There's another pickoff on Cocaine, who he's able to find too, but not much beyond that. And again, trading right now is all fine for Arizona State. As long as you can keep finding staggered trades, you can hold on to the speed flag. And maybe if you can get a little bit more of a favorable kill, but then you can start pushing a little bit further across the map, opening up some of these pinches. You can see on your mini map, UT Dallas is spawning all all the way back by this little trash can area and it's so hard to rotate not only across the middle tracks but also to get into position to where you can even hit this b flag which is why that c side of the map is so favorable will we see ut dallas trying to swing that around or will they keep trying to hit this from the front so far it looks like it's all coming from the front and while the results they have not changed arizona state still holding on to b without a problem yeah cotters i think two in there they're m4 these sight lines being held wonderfully by them and by Sharko as well. We'll be holding this angle for a moment's time, looking into the cafe, then holding this coast side. It's going to be met by Fiasco. Has been continuously throwing themselves over here. And although finding one or two, it's never enough time for the reinforcements to come through ship. And that's why Arizona State are still able to remain in firm control of that point. And there comes that CA hold. As the flip comes through on a B, I said it was rather impossible, but Arizona State having a few choices of words for me no, Cotters, however no, you're, you're right andy it is impossible because look what just happened to the map yeah T dallas spawned out way over towards the seaside 
they're able to send one more player to deal with the A flag, and now all of a sudden there's potential for a triple cap to come through, and there it is. Future Orange able to find himself four kills in a row, looking for potentially a fifth. His gun's not up, and Coders will find the kill, but Arizona Jeez. State, because of that solo play to go hit A when they didn't have enough back pressure to make sure that the C spawns were still in their favor, just got triple capped for the better part of 30 seconds, and they're going to see their lead start to diminish here as now UT Dallas hold on to two flags. And that's what it mostly comes down to, that if you are trying to commit to the triple cap you have to protect your home flag although they get control back into the coveted c, c spawn area arizona state are all spawning out while ut dallas are controlling b side again met over here is fiasco on the coast side but how about cocaine immediately getting two kills within the turn of a second it's gonna allow mr Dave statue to march on forward the m4 and line them up able to find a kill there is one more player that statue could not see but the damage is still there. Trades yeah. coming through. Arizona State still reeling, rather, as they have to start throwing bodies to try to flip this point sometime soon. I mean, we're late in the second quarter here, and Arizona State from the favored spawn is down by almost 12 points here as soon as this flag once it gets flipped, which it very well could be. The coders are making a solo play. Nice little challenge for Bounty <laughs> to find the trade. He'll come back and capitalize. But again, we're in the last 30 seconds, and UT Dallas from the A side of the map is currently in the lead. That is not good at all if you're a Sun Devil fan. You want to see this be 110, 115 points at least for your squad. And UT Dallas getting a pretty significant amount of triple cap time. Might even have a chance to flip this B flag once more. They will not get the opportunity. It will finally go in Arizona State's favor. But still, you're looking at a UT Dallas Comet lead after the half. That's impressive to say the least. Arizona State desperately need to find a way to have a better second half if they want to have a chance in this series. Yeah, Texas Dallas, uh, although starting off slow, and this will be a half win for them by the point value. It's all off of just the overextension coming through from Arizona State. It was just such a misplay, like you were talking about, Shift. Uh, I, I was almost ready to eat my words until you made it uh, clear as day as the, the extension came through, but unprotecting of their home flag turns into a triple cap for Texas Dallas. I mean, you bring yourself all the way back to Hardpoint Hack the Yard. Texas Dallas were leading in the kills then, and they're still doing a good job as far as taking the lead in the kills and turning that into map control right here and now. I mean, again, the only players that aren't positive are the flanking SMGs, which you don't necessarily expect them to be popping off. Right. They're the ones who try to hit the OEs, hit the overextensions, and maybe try to make a play and come through. How about this start for Arizona State, though, as they will find three off the rip. Future Dorns and Mr. J. Pistachio have to hold their lives for as long as possible just to make sure the B flag does not get turned, which Godfather will step on and get the second flag now for Arizona State. And again, if they can hold on to the majority of the time using just the two flags, they will not only come back, but they have a chance to have a better second half than what UT Dallas was able to put together in the first. And this comes down to, will they successfully be able to do that from the A side of the map, or will they look to flip the spawns around? Coders has been doing a good job since this round started, trying to control that ambulance. Coast side, but immediately met. He's flanking SMGs, doing what they do best and being a thorn in the side of Arizona State. Yeah. Got to turn that into map coverage now. They will move a player, Texas Dallas, do onto the B site. Cocaine with a well placed nade, able to find coders and pistachio with a second. Now, this is looking very doable as the flip comes through, securing the B Dom site. Texas Dallas and Envy looking pretty darn good, is on three straight. We'll now be looking to turn that into more as they push towards the buses. Taking some shots, however, we'll just go ahead and get a fadeaway nade to cover themselves. I mean, flat out, I feel like with this map presence that Arizona State has, you need to try to flip the map here. Like, don't even bother with the B-Fly. Just go back for a C. You just had a very favorable kill feed, and everyone just kind of funnels into the middle where Future Norm is able to take down two from a cheeky angle. I believe he's the player that was top of the restaurant. He sure was. And so with him just being, again, oh, that, like oh, you mentioned, oh, no. that nuisance, that little thorn in the side, he's able to capitalize and UT Dallas not only hold on to the B flag, but they will also likely deplete the progress that Arizona State made. And honestly speaking, I think the Sun Devils had a chance to put the spawns around there with that early kill pit that was in their favor of the mid map. It's just one of those decisions that you have to call on such a whim that you have that positional advantage, but you have to give up time to commit towards those rotation shifts so that way you can end up doing that feat. And this is just turning around Texas Dallas holding the right angles. He said as soon as they started pushing forward, Arizona State got absolutely obliterated by the SMGs who were holding the proper corners. Holding over here on to B towards Lion will go down as Envy, but Putrid Orange and Mr. J. Pistachio is right there. How about Mr. J. Pistachio in this 
Lobby yeah. alone is at 24 and 17 for the AR player of Texas Dallas. You said that they were feeling a little shaky about their performance going into this. I hope they feel a lot more confident after this game. And again, we're about to approach the fourth quarter here of domination, the final three minutes. And Arizona State will not just need two points. They're going to need a little bit of a triple cap if they want to come back into this game, especially if they keep getting completely stalled out. Mid map is just a pistachio finds two more. 26 and 19 for the kid. Cocaine mid map going to get a chance in a second. You wanted sniper game. There's Petrid right there. Has pulled out the AX50. Can he get some putrid orange? Put the sniper rifle on the stream. He does get taken down. But you talk about UT Dallas favoring and finding themselves with a little bit of confidence. How about that? He's going to keep it out and watch down the long angle. This might just be insult to injury. This close angle, this shot has to be right there. Gets the shot, misses, however, pulls out the pistol. Fugit Orange. A weird flex, but it's okay. Lands up the oh, shot, cannot oh, connect oh. with the kill. Fugit Orange doing a fantastic job, at least holding the angles. But. This a little gusto coming out here from Texas Dallas does allow Arizona State to approach on forward and is able to control on the beat on site. It is all soon for naught as the kills were ringing through a moment ago. Texas Dallas able to choke on forward and starts getting a little progress on the beat on site immediately Wait. answered back by the spawns by Arizona State. This isn't done yet. They've got two flags and yeah, they're going to capture the third. They need a solo player though for the Sun Devils to go over to the A side of the map. Nobody is over There's there. There's no one here. Yeah, and this is trouble. So now the solo flag is here. They do get the C side of the map, but you need to get SMG player forward to try to make a solo hit for a day. And you can't oh, do that. Bounty. The oh, bounty. Bounty for two, not able to find the last one of that life, which would have been influential. And now all of a sudden, the Arizona State are spawning at the apartment complex, 189 to 171. We're still within the realm of possibility. Arizona State just needs maybe a little bit of time to get a triple cap, and they are right back in this game. So maybe Future Orange with the sniper rifle getting maybe a little bit too fisty with it, but it wasn't necessarily a win. Godfather will get traded out. And again, the closer that UT Dallas can start to amount this to the 210 mark is the moment that it becomes mathematically impossible. Arizona State need a triple cap here late. I have to try to get a little cheeky here. They will commit a player to the coast side. It's about to be met by two on the ambulance. However, Bounty wins that 1v1 versus Fiasco. Traded back by two in the kill feed. Future Orange back to the MP5. It was just like, all right, all right, my bad, my bad, my bad. It is the same exact thing that happened for the triple cap as we were looking for the AC hold uh, from Arizona State earlier. That mere overaggression and overextension can come back to bite you in the rear. But Texas Dallas turning that right back around, going back to what was working wonderfully. We'll be marching on forward. We'll be keeping keep hold on to their flag sites. See, almost getting a little bit scared there, putting players on to B. But look at this flip coming through onto A. The kill feed is still ringing through in the favor of Texas Dallas. Mr. J. Pistachio now with the MP5 coming back into the mix is up at 34 kills. And at this point, again, it just becomes unwinnable for Arizona State. So how about that? The University of Texas at Dallas, the Comets, able to not only get a win, but it's in a 3-0 fashion against the Arizona State Sun Devils of that a lot of people early on were sitting there and saying, goodness gracious, this could be a team that potentially be at the top of the West. They'd never get things going here, though, against the University of Texas, Dallas, and it will be a 3-0 for the Comets. And I want to say it without sounding too incredulous, but that's in, I think, surprising fashion for a lot of people probably even including the five players at UT Dallas, who, again, just a couple of weeks ago, weren't even sure if they were going to be a playoff contender. Now with a big win over a big opponent in the West, they have set themselves up for a very healthy early season win. Mr. J. Pistachio at 35 and 25, saying how they weren't feeling confident going in to this game of the season, feeling a little lackluster about finding players like you were talking about, Alan. And, well, nevertheless, you got to be feeling a little pep in your step here now, Mr. Justin Pistachio. At the end of the day, I mean, that is a fantastic performance. 12 and 6 on SND. Uh, able to hold off those angles on hard point. And going 3 0 and winning the first game of the season for Texas Dallas, that is a good feeling to have indeed. That's massive. The oh, yeah. simple fact that, again, it's not a, a set win, not a series win, but a 3 0 will do well for their map differential as well. 
Again, we've got 72 total teams. This one, though, between two of the powerhouses out west, it was a clean wipe, though, for UT Dallas. 250-182 on the hard point, 6-3 on the search, and then maybe a little bit closer than we were kind of pinning up, but 216-201 to 201 on the St. Petro Dom. UT Dallas looking calm, collected, and just ready to go against this Arizona State squad. They will find themselves their first CCL win. Again, both of these teams new to the college Call of Duty League here in Season 2. And again, both teams hoping to be near the top, if not at the top, of the Western Division. Like I was mentioning, 72 teams. You do the math there. 80, 18, pardon me, 82. I was going to say 82 for some reason. 18 <laughs> squads per those four divisions. And the West looking like it very well could be anyone's for the taking. That's right. Like you said, I mean, there's still a lot to learn for a lot of these teams that uh, are coming around for their first season here in the CCL. And, well, we say surprising. Well, Mr. Justin Pistachio, maybe even sandbagging. We don't really know. I don't really know. It could be, it could be a bag full of nuts at the end of the day that uh, they were just ready to throw at Arizona State University. But, again, that's what good practice will bring you, getting to come collectively and uh, get get with your teammates and being able to hold those angles to just play the game as uh, and even bring yourself back to those finer moments uh, on domination, right. St. Petro there shift. We saw how Arizona state were almost able to gain a lot of good footing in that second quarter, as you may like to call it. Uh, but it was that mirror over extension that they were trying to go for that triple cap without covering their home flag. Then immediately turned into Texas Dallas controlling the entirety of map, not to mention their kills. And then Texas Dallas almost did the same thing with uh, <laughs> With Putrid Orange getting a little bit too big for their britches, turning that MP5 into an AX50. It almost got a little scary there, which is why the points were extremely close. But that's the make or break difference in, in between playing the game straight up versus getting a little bit too confident for your own liking. Regardless, though, as we've mentioned, it was a 3-0 in our first set. Ole Miss Red able to grab that against Concord Gray. Here in this one out west, the UT Dallas Comets taking a 3-0 versus Arizona State. But don't go too far. We've got more college con coming up. It's a battle for Iowa as Northern <laughs> Iowa will be going up against the University of Iowa and giggles from proper because that's not a traditional battleground state. But regardless, that will be this time through. Who will find the favor in Iowa early season? Visions will be joining proper for the final call. Don't go too far. Set number three coming up just after this.